Hare Krishna. The OMG2 movie, a Bhagavad Gita perspective on sex education and related issues. The OMG2 movie depicts the tragic story of a young boy who tries to commit suicide and the bold struggle of his father to do whatever is required to prevent the relapse of such a thing happening for his son and it depicts a dramatic confrontation between him and societal norms now i'll comment on this from three broad perspectives the first is that young people committing suicide is tragic and whatever is required to prevent anything from happening we should give full support for that and this father makes the case that sex education is what is required now we will examine first is it that sex education would have helped prevent this boy's suicidal attempt so the overall storyline is that the boy is a typical teenage trying to woo a girl and when he succeeds other uh, other boys become envious and they try to minimize him and they see him and they see his reproductive organ and they say that oh they make fun of it for its small size and he feels insecure and he tries to he tries to take some medication which try, which by which he tries to increase his size he thinks that by masturbation the size can be increased and then he, he has some self health complications because of that and then finally when he thinks that he has succeeded or whatever in what he wanted to do then he is masturbating and these people some of his friends take videos or other co-students definitely not his friends they take a video and that video becomes viral he feels disgraced and humiliated by that and his school also rusticates him and then that makes him feel even more humiliated and he tries to end his life so now here sex education how would it have prevented this boy's suicide is it that sex education by telling him that okay masturbating is normal and natural so there's no need for him to feel ashamed of it would that have prevented his suicide well he was doing it anyway mm -hmm. and it was not that he was the movie doesn't depict that he himself was felt burdened by guilt for what he was doing is it that uh, by the sex education can be a very important topic and that is fair enough but how exactly would sex education have prevented this boy's suicide so would it have told the people boys in general that the other boys other kids that you know there's nothing nothing unnatural about it so they would not have picked a made a video out of it would have told society that it there's no need to make this video viral would the idea that sex that masturbation normal have prevented the school from rusticating the boy well the point is that this whole subsequent scenario is quite unrealistic maybe in 25 years before in india maybe uh, somebody caught masturbating would have been embarrassing but even then would it have been scandalous enough that it would have been a viral video and in today's world uh, in the in the past world maybe it was scandalous but at that time there were no mobile cameras to shoot quickly and there was no social media to make it viral in today's world the fact that something like this would become viral and so much so that a school would take action and suspend that whole seems highly unrealistic so yes boys suicide attempt should be prevented but if at all any sex education would have helped him to prevent that it is not the sex education that masturbation is normal it is the sex education about the dangers of of medicines of which promise or ideas techniques or tools which promise to change one's bodily organs so like uh, increase the size of those organs it is so sex education especially in today's world uh, is necessary the bhagavad gita says that Nol that intelligence in the mode of goodness, satvik buddhi, is what pravrittim cha nirvrittim cha karya karye bhaya bhaye bandham moksham cha yaveti buddhi sa partha satviki. So that buddhi, that intelligence, which helps us understand 
what is beneficial what is harmful that intelligence is intelligence in the mode of goodness and it should be cultivated so in one sense you can say the intelligence which tells us what is dangerous and what should be avoided that intelligence should be provided so if we consider in today's world there is a great danger of for example children being sexually exploited and it often this sexual horrendous child abuse of children happens through people whom they are familiar with sometimes even their relatives or acquaintances so children need to be educated about uh, a good and bad touch and as people grow older maybe as they enter into puberty and when people are likely to become sexually active then unhealthy sexual behaviors they might get into uh, behavior that cause terrible diseases and they might try out medicines and procedures and stuff like that just to enhance their sexual attributes and there could be health hazards of that so where there is danger there has to be education for protection and especially in today's world where there is so much free access to porn so people get a very distorted idea of what sex is and what the sexual features of people are what is depicted in such depictions is far different far more exaggerated than what is there in real life so yes sex education for protecting people from children a people in general children and youth from dangerous behaviors whether by others or even by themselves that kind of sex education is helpful maybe even necessary now is this mentioned in the bhagavad gita directly not necessarily but the point is that the bhagavad gita does say we should be equipped to deal with dangers so in the past there was not so much uh, people with predatory mentality at least thousands of years ago there's no record of in the vedic vedic culture this kind of being there also there's no record of uh, there's no record of such easy access to pornography being there people having such distorted ideas of sexuality because of their imagination being fueled with misinformation and disinformation and exaggeration so today uh, when there are there is a risk or the hazard is there then sex education may be necessary but the sex education that is necessary for this boy would have been that okay don't take dangerous treatment something treatment which made him fall unconscious and which could create a risk for his life is the sex education that masturbation is normal would that really have prevented his suicide what caused his suicide was his sense of insecurity his insecurity because of which he felt that if he did not have a particular physical attribute in a particular way then he would be considered worthless the bhagavad gita says that we all all atma we are spiritual beings and the fundamental illusion is that we identify with our physical body and when people commit suicide that generally because of some kind of misidentification some people identify too much with their money and if their stock market crashes they think they equate their self worth with their net worth they feel if i don't have money then what is the point of living and they end their life some students may equate their self worth with their marks and if i don't get marks good enough then i'll commit suicide but here what has happened is a person is identifying their very core their core identity with with the not just their body not just with the or organ in the body but with the size of a particular organ in the body now this is moha and to remove this this misconception this misidentification this illusion what is needed is spiritual education education that our that there is more to us than our externals including even our physical attributes we are at our core spiritual beings each one of us is precious and valuable each one of us has higher meaning and purpose for our existence this is the knowledge this is the knowledge given in the bhagavad gita and this is what can truly help people avoid suicide allergies especially because of insecurities and the uh, failures and the humiliations that may result in life so 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 yes we want to fully support the idea that young people should not be impelled to commit suicide but the solution is not the sex education that masturbation is normal it is a spiritual education 
that we are there's more to us than our external and physical attributes and therefore we are being eternal should not get too carried away too dejected by certain external losses or inadequacies beyond that let's look at a couple of other issues that uh, the masturbation the uh, the point is that this is said to be completely normal and natural and it is also said that this is that the past indian culture was very liberal and now it's conservative okay let's look at both of these points is masturbation really natural and normal what do we really mean by, mean by natural that if you consider the call of nature when the call of nature say urination the call for urination comes and we don't have to stimulate our bodily organs for that just it naturally happens for masturbation people have to generally physically stimulate their organ and after that they often have to either see something visually or recollect something that they have seen before so in that sense if it were just natural and normal why is all this artificial stimulation required and another point is that this the semen that comes out when one masturbates actually that has is that like urine really urine is just a waste product from the body this has the potential to create new life and there's a universe of difference between the two both may be our bodily products everything that is produced is the transformation of the body but one product is filled with enormous nutritive value enough to nourish a entire new life form that comes so the two to say that it's simply natural is 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 misle is is incomplete part is incomplete uh, uh, version of the reality and even if sex education is there sex education needs to have both a biological component and an ethical component what is the bio, how the biology of the body functions that education is required but the ethical component is that there are certain actions which are which are harmful which are counterproductive i mean even if we put aside the religious angle because we say religions have dogmas even from a common sense perspective even from a experiential perspective and that you know from a scientific perspective sex addiction is a significant danger and when people get addicted to sex sex they are just they succumb to all kinds of behavior exposing themselves masturbating compulsively and be unable to get off porn even flashing their bodies then seeking serial partners now i'm not saying all this will result simply from porn so from masturbation no. but the point is it's a slippery slope and keynes has written a book out of the shadows talking about sexual addiction and uh, this is a real and serious problem so when masturbation is simply uh, propagated as completely normal natural we may well be pushing people down a dangerous slippery steep slope things telling them there's no danger over there but they may slip down how far they may slip down who knows not everybody who masturbates is going to become a sex addict necessarily but that danger is there and people need to be aware of that and not providing that education and simply saying that this is just natural is misleading further even from a secular perspective uh, that there is a widespread increasingly spreading no fab movement where young people are resolving consciously to give up masturbation and basically we call it pmo on masturbation orgasm and they are giving it up not because of any religious restraints but simply because it is impeding them in real life when people um, expose themselves to porn masturbate compulsively then in they have a distorted idea of what sex is and they just don't get it stimulated enough in real life and then they can't uh, can't have physical relationships future they can't have children so the dangers in making you no know, masturbation completely nonchalantly natural propagating it like that and this education has to be there and this is completely missing now going further what do the what is the vedic text say about these things yes there is the quoting of the kama sutra now yes kama sutra is a part of the broad vedic canon of books but at the same time 
a just because something has a place in the vedic tradition does not mean the place of everything is equal or equally important we need to understand a tradition from the followers of the tradition from the teachers of the tradition what does this tradition mean to them what is it that they have found of value yeah. and what is it that the great teachers whether we consider uh, vaishnu teachers like ramanujacharya or madhvacharya or even advaitic teachers like shankaracharya or even vedan vedantic teacher like uh, sankhya's ishwara krishna many of these teachers they have commented extensively on the broad vedic literature none of them has said that oh all followers of the veda should read uh, of vedic tradition should read the kama sutra that is one book it is a small part of the vedic tradition it is it has only become glamorized because when europeans came to india there were two groups there were the christian missionaries and there were the uh, rationalists the christian missionaries the, the, the evangelicals when they came they wanted to criticize hinduism and they said oh just see these people their 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 text contain such explicit descriptions and it is so obscene so immoral and they use that to trash the hindu tradition and the vedic text in general and then the rationalist school who came they said that they basically were rejecting god and they wanted in some ways license for sexuality so i said oh this is from ancient times there is this book which is talking about sex so through both of these it came in the limelight and yes today in the west the among the books from the indian tradition that are widely known uh, kama sutra is one of the most known books but the kama sutra has never had a prom place of prominence in the broad vedic tradition itself mm -hmm. uh, as it has been understood and practiced by millions for millennia so same way it is quoted that the there are temples where there are depictions of quite explicit depictions are there the temples have a sacred architect uh, architecture and though that architecture is meant to replicate the cosmos of the universe and the idea is that we live on the earth above the earth is heaven where there's lots of enjoyment available including mundane enjoyment including sexual enjoyment also but there is a higher happiness available beyond swarga so this is earth this is heaven and this is vaikuntha this is spiritual world and the temple the sanctum sanctorum where the lord resides is the vaikuntha so to go to vaikuntha one has to go through heavens without being distracted by them similarly the temple architecture is that it has all these depictions but the idea is one who is a serious worshipper will not get distracted by these things will go straight ahead so there is a purpose within the sacred uh, cosmology and the philosophy of the tradition and that purpose was not to just explicitly license sexuality and the allegation is that um, this kind of prudishness this kind of conservative things came from macaulay who brought victorian moral standards into india well this is quite a cunning or insidious way accusation because the idea that means those who are liberals they are the real teachers of the vedic tradition and those who are conservatives they have actually uh, fall they are following somebody outside the vedic tradition well it is not macule who said in the bhagavad gita that trividam narkasyedam dwaram nashanam atmana kamah krodh satha lobha tasmad etatrayam tejet it is not macule who said that there are three gates to hell and one of them is kama is lust so it is it is the bhagavad gita spoken thousands of years before before macule so the idea of sexual restraint because kama can become dushpure nanane kam can become disproportionate kam can become destructive that is taught in the bhagavad gita which is a fundamental vedic book the same is talked about in the uh, bhagavatam the whole story of the mahabharata is based on the kam the unrestrained kam of ravana and how it led to destruction so now yes now the bhagavad gita itself has been quoted to say dharma viruddho bhuteshu kamo asmi bharatarshava so clear krishna says that uh, that i am sex life but what is a sex life not contrary to dharma so there are four purusharthas there is dharma 
अर्थ काम एंड मोक्ष तो धर्म इज वन इन फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग ऑफ लाइफ वन लर्न सम वैल्यूज वन सम रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज इट इंक्लूड्स रिलीजियस वैल्यूज बट वन लर्न एथिकल वैल्यूज व्हिच इन्वॉल्व्स सेल्फ रिस्ट्रेंट एंड डिसिप्लिन वन लर्न्स बाउंड्रीज एंड बाय लर्निंग सच बाउंड्रीज देन वन कैन बिकम रिस्पॉन्सिबल इनफ टू गेन अर्थ वन एक्वायर्स रिसोर्सेज एंड लर्न्स टू मैनेज रिसोर्सेज प्रॉपरली एंड इन दिस वे वन वन हैज गॉट वैल्यूज एंड वन हैज गॉट थिंग्स ऑफ वैल्यू then a person is who is mature enough to actually get married and then they can fulfill their karma and then they can have children so such such karma krishna says specifically that is a manifestation of the divine that is where when um, my husband duly wedded husband and wife come together in the procreative act at that time they become co-creators with god in bringing new life into this world and the miracle of birth is something which is to be celebrated but it is that dharma that is it is that karma which krishna is saying i am that karma krishna makes this clear this is 711 in the 10th chapter he says prajnas chasmi kandarpa that kandarpa is the male female attraction krishna says that kandarpa which leads to prajna which leads to the begetting of progeny that is who i am that he is not simply saying sex especially where somebody is masturbating that is sacred not at all so there are four purusharthas and gradually when after doing dharma artha kama one dharma and artha one does kama then over a period of time that person starts realizing there must be more to life than fulfilling such desires and then that person seeks moksha so krishna himself in the bhagavad gita says that there is a danger that among these four purusharthas the four can be neg- fourth can be neglected people forget moksha and say na anyad asti iti vadina ha that just in life just do dharma artha and kama and he said these people themselves are misled because ultimately the highest fulfillment comes when we go beyond our bodily limitations we become liberated from our bodily identification and we find happiness at the spiritual level but post industrial revolution scientific revolution the growth of atheism dharma was also more or less removed all that is focused on artha and kama somehow or other get wealth and then enjoy life and that kind of culture is spread across the world also so people think of values as valuable only to the extent that can help them function properly but otherwise is a if i can get away morality for most people to for many people today is just lack of opportunity so dharma has been devalued so all that remains artha and kama and now unfortunately with the spread of porn masturbation and orgasm pmo as it is called even artha has been removed all that is left is kama that means somebody doesn't even have to who learn to get take a responsible job or get a living uh, and become competent enough to manage resources like wealth then they can have a family and then they can have relationship no it's just karma it is karma which is completely divorced from everything else that gives meaning to life so when krishna talks about karma even from a biological perspective the sexual act its primary purpose is reproduction the secondary purpose is in humans especially it is pair bonding you know, human progeny need a lot of care generally far more care than other species and who will provide them that care so the sexual act is meant to create a bond between the the parents so that they can subsequently together take care of the child so the sexual act brings, brings sexual is pair bonding and then after a third is pleasure there is some pleasure in that act but that is the tertiary thing and when the the point of reproduction is removed that is done through say through various kinds of artificial means and pair bonding is removed by the idea of sexual licentiousness you can do just sex is just normal natural like you do what to it however you like without even having a relation having a virtuous uh, dharmic relationship a meaningful committed relationship with other person then what happens is just becomes for pleasure and this will lead to 
severe problems the persons people will not be growing individually they will not be taking responsibilities humanity will not succeed if people don't have children the western countries are experiencing severe demographic drops because more and more people are divorcing sexuality from committed relationships and from pro reproduction so these have serious consequences and it is not this just this karma separated from dharma artha and moksha that is not god krishna says this is actually it is mahashano mahapapma vidhyenam ihavairanam this is actually the greatest enemy of humanity so unfortunately this may not have been the intention of the movie makers but by quoting scripture quoting the vedic scriptures in this way they may actually be opening the doors for people to go on a path which will be self destructive so just uh, licensing giving a free license for masturbation it can as i said earlier take people down a terrible slippery slope so this is mis is completely opposite to the teachings of the vedic literature and then one part last part was about shaming this boy was shamed and everybody has sex and why can't we talk about it why is talking about it taboo and why is uh, why is depicting it and seeing it why is, should this be such an object of shame as i said i feel that the idea that somebody would be when film doing such a thing that video will become viral and that person will be rusticated because of that and that person will, will feel humiliated that itself is is uh, unrealistic but what about the point of shaming is that a bad thing well not necessarily all the time uh, there are restraints required for people to not do things which are harmful and sometimes if social disapproval can act as a restraint then that can complement uh, legal punitive measures where people are punished for doing what they do so for consider smoking in public now in the past maybe 25 30 years ago people would just smoke in public as if it's a very fashionable and everybody would think it was cool but now as the dangers of not just smoking for the smoker but for others who smoke at smoker smoke is passive smoking as they have become clearer now passive smoking has dropped there's only secure restricted areas where that is allowed and in general people follow that now there are legal fines which are, which do this but there is also the power of shaming when somebody starts doing something like this then immediately you stop them that people disapprove of it you go somewhere else and smoke and people do that so shaming itself is not a bad thing that society disapproving certain actions itself is not not a bad thing now how exactly shaming is applied and can shaming have bad consequences where a person feels to totally demoralized and dejected that's possible but to say that society should never shame anyone that doesn't work in real life society needs a ethical boundaries there is a case of in america of an one senior cnn reporter a supposedly senior and respected reporter journalist he was on a zoom call with some people uh, with his colleagues and he didn't realize that his video was on for the zoom call and while he was on that business zoom call he was uh, masturbating he had exposed his body and that was seen by all the colleagues that became a scandal and then he was suspended for some time so the point is that there is shame even in a place like america where the culture is much liberal where sex education is there there are certain actual actions which will lead to shaming the so shaming itself is not a problem it is when that shaming is app applied inappropriately uh, applied viciously and especially when people do not have the inner substance by which they can resist the effects of shame that is when it is toxic so if we want people to have inner strength then that necess necessarily means that they need spiritual education and that is what the bhagavad gita provides so yes we fully like to conclude we fully agree that somebody committing suicide is tragic and a father want to do wanting to do whatever it takes even taking on the world to make sure that such a relapse such incidents and relapse recur that is great but the means to do that is not simply the sex not the sex education that masturbation is normal it is actually primarily spiritual education that our identity and our worth are not determined by our external or physical attributes 
we are eternal spiritual beings that is the knowledge of the bhagavad gita and as far as the master uh, masturbation is concerned well there is uh, if you want sex education what is much more important is with the dangers of children being preyed on by child abusers of the dangers of the health and other hazards of the sexual behaviors or sexual so called treatments and when it if at all any sex education or masturbation is to be given it is it is not simply natural like urination it is there are also dangers of sex addiction there are dangers of people, people physical non performance in real relationships that it can become addictive this education also needs to be given and as far as quoting the vedic scriptures is concerned the vedic scriptures do talk about kama but they also talk about dharma artha kama and moksha and to talk only about kama and neglect everything else that is not only misrepresenting the vedic literature but it can also be misleading people therefore holistic ed spiritual education which can have a sexual component is what is needed to strengthen people internally thank you hare krishna